Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Sharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles. And I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, a neuroscientist and psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's it's going well. Um, Good. I want to revisit a topic we talked about in episode 17. Okay. That episode was, we called it Diet Confusion, and we talked about all the different fad diets that are out there and what we recommended, and here's a spoiler, we recommended the Mediterranean diet for health, for health reasons, but I get asked a lot about the keto diet. Right. And as a matter of fact, here's a voicemail we got from one of the listeners um, that I want to play for you, and uh, he asked a lot of good questions, so here we go. Hi, Jill and Andrea. I've been listening to your podcast and learning a bunch from it, and I've been thinking about the keto diet. A lot of people I know are on it. Everyone's talking about it. It's the latest thing. Um, my buddies are losing weight, and I've been struggling with my weight basically for most of my adult life. And I was curious about this diet and was thinking of trying it, and I'd like to hear from the experts uh, a little more about it. First of all, what is it? it, it is, is it a healthy way to lose weight? Uh, I don't want to get on one of those fat diets where as soon as you're off it, you put everything back on. And is it a sustainable diet? And does it work with someone with a bunch of kids, big family? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much. Love your podcast. Mendel. Okay, so Mendel asks a lot of good questions. Um, and it seems like he really wants to hear about what what is it? Does it work? Is it sustainable? So what we have today is we have a very special guest. Uh, his name is Moshe Block, um, and he's going to hopefully help us answer some of these questions. Uh, Moshe is a nationally certified EMT who volunteers with Hatzala of Los Angeles and is a father of three boys. He has been practicing a ketogenic, low carb lifestyle for almost two years and has lost ninety pounds while wow, doing so. Yeah. He is a firm believer in understanding how the food you eat affects your body, incorporating intermittent fasting and getting the body in motion with a consistent exercise routine. Moshe resides in Los Angeles, where he is part owner of Meshuggah for Sushi and, oh. yeah, <laughs> and has a lifestyle cooking blog on Instagram at Keto Kosher. He most recently won Kosher.com Skillet Cooking Competition. Hey, Moshe. Congratulations. Hey. Wow. That's Thanks for exciting. Yeah, thank you. It's so nice also. Usually our guests are, you know, we have to be calling from New York. So it's so nice actually having Moshe in studio. We can look at you while we're talking um, and get some of Mendel's questions hopefully answered about the keto diet. So um, so it's been very successful for you. Yeah, I, I've started keto about, uh, I would say, 18 months ago. Um I get Mendel's question um, in terms of keto. There's a lot of people think it's a fad diet. People think you have to take supplements for it. There is a lot of confusion around it. And I, I was confused when I first started, especially, I mean, the, f the first experience I had with keto in terms of being introduced to it was a friend of mine was on it and he was taking these ketones. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was a powdered supplement that went into his drink. And that's what I thought the keto Diet, diet was. was so i bought it and then once i started reading like the packet and it was saying that this is supposed to be introduced with the ketogenic lifestyle i was like okay what is the ketogenic lifestyle so that's when i started just doing a lot of research about it and i, I was able to like learn and understand um the keto diet from from what it is and and okay. yeah okay so first of all i think andrew maybe you should talk about from a, a physical yeah. standpoint or, you know, what is the keto diet? What, why is it different? How, how, what, what's going on? So I want to add just one little thing, sure. which you probably know about. Well, you know, as we've been saying recently, there's nothing new under the sun and there really isn't. Um, the keto diet has been around 100%. for at least a hundred years, if yeah. not more. Uh, it was first used for children with very hard to control seizures and it, certain kinds of seizures, and it was very helpful for that. Uh, another version of it came out, uh, although the version now it, that's used nowadays is much healthier. The version that came out was in the 70s, known as the Atkins diet, and especially the first couple of weeks 
of the Atkins diet, which were like the kickoff, uh, were a very ketogenic diet. Right. What is so what is the keto diet? So normally when we have a more balanced diet, or at least a diet where we have carbohydrates in it, that's what our bodies use first for energy. And we take in the carbohydrates and then our body uses insulin to break it down to a basic sugar glucose. And I'm not going to go any further because it could get very boring very quickly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so suffice it to say, if carbs are around, that's what our bodies are going to use for energy. Now we do store some carbs, um, about enough for about 24 hours worth of energy if we don't take in any other food during that time. And after that, our bodies uh, start to go to our fat stores, which is another storehouse of energy for us. But that only um, happens at any large rate if there's really no or very low carbs around. Yeah, a lot of people make mistake when they first start and they, they don't get themselves fat adapted. They don't get themselves... They don't go low carb enough. Exactly, low carb enough for a long period of time where they're tapping into that fat. And that period of time can vary from person to person. 100%. There's not going to be a huge range. It's not going to be like two days for somebody and three weeks for another. But there is a range there and it could be anywhere from like, you know, three to seven days before they start fat adapting. So you're doing five, you're doing about 5% of your diet is carbohydrates. So you're looking at about 25 to 20 net carbs, total of 50 carbs. Yeah. 50 yeah. Grams so what, of I mean, you say five. Five percent. So fat makes up about seventy percent of the diet. Correct. Protein makes out about twenty, and carb make up about ten. Which is like compared to something like the Zone Diet, which is considered a little bit more balanced of a diet. It's thirty, thirty, forty. So it's a significantly different. Diet. Yeah, it's giving it's giving your body the the minimum amount of carbohydrates necessary to you know have the proper brain function and 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 body function out of those carbohydrates. And utilizing the your body fats for for the rest because what your body will then do will be shift shifting to breaking down fat and when it breaks down fat it produces what's called ketones and ketones can be used for energy hence the name ketone diet the ketogenic diet right so you're not taking ketones your body's actually that's why it's confusing to a lot of people like people are like what are ketones it doesn't sound like you have it in your body but you know anyone that does you and kipper fast you test their their ketone levels after the fast they they'll have, have high higher, ketones cancer. yeah right so in their blood. so some of the benefits obviously you talked about the epileptic seizures Correct. yeah yeah i mean people doing it for health reasons like epilepsy or cancer there's different i mean yeah, completely mm -hmm. separate. You can get into like really um, long conversations in terms of that. Right. Like cell autophagy in deep intermittent fasting. I mean, but for someone that wants to really like get into um, like the keto diet for weight loss, it's really just limiting um, the carbohydrates. It's getting into that low carb state. And and when you say carbohydrates, I just want to, because we talk Processed about carbohydrates. carbohydrates, like bread, right. rice, grains. So Okay, so uh, fruits. I mean, I have yeah, I I have berries, strawberries, right. blueberries, right. So, raspberries. And what about things like squash and corn? Because those are in moderation. Carbohydrates so, also. I mean, again, mm -hmm. when I first started out, I wasn't exercising. Ah. About three four months into my into the, my uh, keto journey, I, I started exercising, doing like a lot of cardio, and my body needed more carbohydrates. So I was able to have, you know what. Fruits and vegetables that are higher in carbohydrates, or someone that is is more um, is, is sedentary, yeah, is not is not moving around, mm -hmm. um, and they need to have that minimum amount of carbohydrates. Then fine, you you shouldn't be having the, the squash and corn and and yeah. foods like that. Um, but with working out, I was able to consume more carbohydrates because my body was going was utilizing more of the carbohydrates, right. and this way, yeah, I was able to introduce carbohydrates that someone on a regular keto diet wasn't able to have. So I have a question about sure. that. So when you're measuring carbs, do you also take into account fiber? Because, you know, there's this thing, like when you're looking at the carbs, you can subtract the fiber from it and that gives you your net carbs. Yeah, there's total carbs and net carbs as well as you also have sugar alcohols that you don't count. So if you've got an item with 20 total uh, total grams of carbohydrates um, and then it has 10 grams of dietary fiber, so you can subtract the 10 from the total of the 20. Yeah, so you would get 10 total net carbs on that. So there's this brand of tortillas that I love, a Tortilla Factory. Oh, La Tortilla. Yeah, it's my the favorite. Low the low-carb oh, yeah. tortillas. Uh, yeah, this is something people need to know okay. about. These are like magic yeah, tortillas. 
Four, <laughs> yeah, there's like one that's four, gra- four grams net carbs. It's like amazing. So. It's like 12 grams yeah. of carbs, but eight grams of fiber, which is a huge amount of fiber. And compared to the one, the one exact same size. Well, forget the calories. And it's got like five grams of protein. Yeah. So you can easily have two of them and your net carbs are like three or four grams of carbs per two. Exactly. And they actually taste good. Right. Okay. So I'll put so, a, so getting to that, I'll, I'll put, um, I'll put a link on the, the website. The first ingredient on that is actually water, water and then oat fiber. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of, I mean, getting, getting to that, like I didn't want to restrict, I, I've been on plenty of diets just like Mendel has. I've tried the juice, the juicing. I've tried Atkins even. I tried Weight Watchers. I mean, I've been struggling with my weight my entire life. Um, learning, learn, getting into the keto uh, lifestyle, it taught me about food. It taught me finding the right food. So it's not limiting myself to, if I want nachos, I'm going to have nachos. I'll find a low carb chips and I'm just going to, you know, incorporate, I, I'll leave out the beans, but I'll have the salsa, the guacamole, the sour cream and all that. It's not, it's not about limiting yourself to the foods that you want. You have to be open to, open to um, the food, um, like new foods and, and stuff like that. But it's finding low carb, low carb items. Options. Okay, so you know, I have, a, I have a question. I just want to hear what your typical day looks like from when you wake up in the morning sure. till you go to sleep. What What exactly are you eating? So morning wise, I'm having coffee, mm-hmm. coffee and water. I'm not having my first when I first started. Or do you want to hear it how I do it now or how how I did um, it when I first started? I I guess let's first started. Yeah, when I first started out. I cut out all snacking. It was three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. Breakfast was about eight, eight o'clock. It was an omelet, whether with cheese, avocado, um, and I would switch it up. I'd have salmon with it, like lox. Um, that was a typical breakfast. Lunch, I would have a huge salad. Mm-hmm. So a big, big green salad with whether it was eggs or deli or meat, um, there, um, yeah. So that was that was typically lunch. Obviously, um, having lots of water throughout the day, and my biggest meal would be dinner. Um, so by about, I would I would have dinner about seven o'clock. Want to be finished by seven o'clock, um, and that would consist of vegetables and a protein. So I would find, you know, what steak, chicken, salmon. Um, if I wanted to get lazy, eggs again. But it was it was I always wanted to like change it up. I was always like, you know what? If I'm in the mood of salmon, I'm gonna have salmon. And in terms of vegetables, having there's a wide range of vegetables that are like low in carbohydrates. And I mean, if you're talking about carbohydrates from from vegetables, I mean, you can have a lot of vegetables if if you weigh it out and you understand. Um, Nobody ever got fat on exactly. Fat on there you go. No one's getting. Um, fat. Did you cook before? Does like how does that? I mean, is your wife so involved? Like my, this? My wife. Just... I mean, now when she, when she cooks, yeah. For me, she's doing she's doing keto or low carb. Obviously, um, when I first started, not at all. I mean, I was eating takeout like most of the time, not even from my own restaurant. It was <sighs> that was the issue. It was just eating lots of takeout or or um, just yeah. It was also like not smart eating. So like I wouldn't because I was busy during the day. Like breakfast and lunch, it didn't exist, and then dinner I would just exactly. Right. So there was no yeah, rhyme or reason, and then mm-hmm. snacking. Lots of sodas, right? And then let's not even talk about Shabbos, but right. yeah, that was just during the week. So I went w- just with starting simple, three meals a day, cutting out snacking, and finishing my meal by seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, and then not having anything until breakfast. And I wasn't right. working out then, so your body has enough nutrients from from that amount that you're eating um, to get you to the next morning. So I mean, mm-hmm. there's no need for that late night snacking, right? So what do you do now? So now it's a little bit different. I mean, I'm already fat adapted, um, already into my journey for almost coming up on two years. Um, now typical Monday through Friday, um, ha- I, I don't have my first meal till about one, two o'clock and that's included. I'm, I'm, I'm doing fasted workouts most of the time. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's also days where I only have one meal, but I'm still having my total amount of carbohydrate, uh, sorry, my total amount of calories, um, just in a set period in that of time. one meal in that one meal or that two meal. So I'm having, uh-huh. let's say I'm intermittent fasting for 20 hours. So I'm having a four hour window of where I can eat my 1800 calories or 2000 mm-hmm. calories, whatever, whatever I'm on. And it's just sticking to that. And I don't find myself hungry, but again, I mean, it's not realistic to do that on a daily basis, right. whether if you have a, a lunch meeting or that. Right. So it's, it's, it's playing into that. So if I know I have to eat breakfast, I'll eat breakfast mm-hmm. because yeah. I, because I can Right, because it, it sounds like 
it's veering into a little bit of disordered eating when it's just that one big yeah, meal. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that the often. There are days where I just don't feel hungry. I mm-hmm. I have the the nutrient. My body's getting the nutrients at what it needs from from the fat. I am including. Um, I do have like salt in, in my water. Um, right, I'm that's having, important. I'm having coffee. Mm-hmm. I'm making sure you're all- putting butter in the coffee. No, I don't. No, no I <laughs> never did any of that. But that's why people like are are thrown away from. I, I was thrown away from that with the MCT oils and right. the butter in your coffee. Yeah. Look, it could help you get you into ketosis a little bit quicker. But I didn't need that to to do all that. I didn't do mm-hmm. the, obs- but the obscene amounts of fats. Like right. you have enough body fats. To, to so did you that. suffer from the keto flu at all? And let's talk about what that. Yes. Yeah. So all, and it was only because of my lack of knowledge of the keto diet. It was just really the the the, ele- the electrolytes that I was missing. So besides for I mean, you do get some sort of withdrawal from carbohydrates. Um, right. But my body, I definitely wasn't consuming enough salt, magnesium, the potassium, just because mm-hmm. I was just learning about the diet. So right. I needed to incorporate the foods with with those nutrients so right so the keto diet is when people experience side effects when they go the keto flu sorry when they go <laughs> from they go zero to 60 really zero yeah. to 60 they cut out their carbs and then they have headache and nausea oh, yeah. and and they just because all of a sudden their body has to make this transition into the diet yeah. and they're not okay but then usually the body will adapt yeah. and occasionally they'll experience a sense of euphoria once they pass that point yeah Um, And getting back to the intermittent fasting, I didn't start that until about three, four months into my journey where I did, I wasn't hungry. I didn't need the three meals a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I just, I mean, we've obviously talked a little bit about intermittent fasting and, um, you know, it definitely works for some people, but, uh, you know, you have to know yourself. A hundred percent. So I just wanted to say, this is not the diet for everyone and a side medical thing. If you have any kind of kidney disease, this is definitely not the diet for you. It is too high in protein. Yeah, anyone with an underlying medical issue, right. you should be talking to your doctor before you do right. it. Right, uh, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. I know you're saying this, but did you were you self-taught or It was. I mean, I I learned most of it. I mean, I learned everything mm-hmm. from from either books or YouTube, uh, mm-hmm. finding finding people that um had a background like Dr. Eric Berg. It was it was mm-hmm. one, one guy, one gentleman I follow um and he very knowledgeable, has great informative videos on YouTube for free. And it was just reading his information and finding books that backed also backed his information and just really just learning all about the diet. That's right. and it was just becoming obsessed with my with my health. Right. And I, I just, saw and I was yeah. seeing success. So that's why I kept like, all right, it's working. So Right. I, I would just recommend that if people are wanna do they want to oh, yeah. do this, that they talk to a nutritionist or somebody who Yeah, you don't want to just be yeah, jumping into this. Because yeah, it's not it, it's not gonna go well. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to learn and be and, and be educated about it. So I know overall it's gone well for you, but any problems you've encountered, especially at the beginning? Um Besides for fatigue in the beginning, just because I wasn't incorporating um, the right amounts of nutrients into my diet, um, I just, as well as also like, you know, definitely having that withdrawal from carbohydrates. I mean, I had, yeah, crazy urges for, you know, for wanting to binge um, and stuff like that. Just like, like in general, any, anytime you're like restricting yourself from something in the beginning, it's difficult. Um, But I would say, I mean, for the most part, it it was it was a smooth uh, for me at least it was it was a smooth uh, transition. Right. So the way to avoid that is is go low carb before you really exactly. jump yeah. into it. Uh, and totally. Up your vegetable intake. Right. Yeah. And right. And I was going to say I don't know if this t- too much TMI TMI, um, but you know your fiber from the grains, the whole grains, the rice. Does that affect bathroom habits? Not. I mean, if. It- Get it? If we're talking about TMI, no. I mean, I went from being extremely unhealthy before, and, and nothing was was regular. And I mean, mm-hmm. now, thank God. I mean, yeah. Every I it, know, I think I know what the yeah. issue is too. It's uh, not getting enough greens. So you know, getting a lot of greens, they're very fibrous, obviously, and that's going to take care of that issue. Yeah. Also. Yeah. So you know, anyone who eats a lot of lettuce, a lot of greens. Okay, I'm not going to talk around it. You know, they're basically, they're going to have a couple of good bowel movements. Oh, 100%. Right? Especially if his diet was so poor beforehand, right. it's, it's, he's probably was getting more fiber no matter what. So I think this could be a really good diet for 
for people. But one thing I do want to caution people about is that this is not like a quick fix diet that you're going to use to lose 20 pounds. Um, this is a diet where you're really going to change your habits. Otherwise, it could really set you up for yo-yo dieting because I could see people using this and then they're like, yeah, I lost 20 pounds. Okay, lead me to the cookies. Yeah, especially on a diet like this where it's high in fat. You don't want to be all of a sudden doing this for two weeks and then jumping off of it, still having all those fats and then all of a sudden incorporating cupcakes back into your diet and, and, and carbohydrates. It's it's definitely not. But but I, I think if I'm not wrong, that, that most medical professionals would recommend this as a short term. So there, the studies that have been done on that um, have looked at alternating the keto diet with a real Mediterranean diet. Okay. And the way the studies go is that somebody's on the keto diet for at least like three weeks and then uh -huh. they're on the Mediterranean diet for two months and then they go back to the keto diet for three weeks. Yeah. I mean, there is, yes, cyclical keto. I think right. called, yeah. And I think that can work for people because when they go back off of the keto diet, they're not going back to an unhealthy diet. They're going back to a really healthy, clean diet right. with just, you know, some more carbs. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like you're not, you know, you do incorporate carbs, especially like... Yeah, it's so, all about, it's, yeah. you know, people think you can't have carrots on like the keto diet. It's mm -hmm. not true. I mean, you could, if you're weighing it out and you're, right. and you're understanding, you know, in terms of portion control, um, where this changed my life in terms of keto, it, it taught me about learning about the foods I eat. It really taught me about what carbohydrates do, what mm -hmm. sugars do, what your body does with fiber. And, and that's where it's, it's changed my, my relationship with food and with, with eating. So um, it's not really getting into that geeky side of, of keto where, you know, with introducing the ketones mm -hmm. and, the, and the bulletproof coffee. It's You're just eating Eating better. whole, whole, whole foods and right. getting my body into a state of ketosis at the right. same time. So, it, so Andrew, this acidic state of ketosis, is that, is that something that people should be striving for? Or I would think acidic blood would not be good. It depends on the person. Right. Although there are mixed data on this. Mm -hmm. It can help blood sugar control, especially if someone is like pre-diabetic, if they're kind of on the verge, if their um, blood sugars are borderline high, or if their um, glycosylated hemoglobin is, you know, at the edge. But somebody who's diabetic already, um, the ketosis part can actually send them into what's called ketoacidosis, which is extremely dangerous and, in fact, is a medical emergency. So again, if you have medical problems, you do need to talk to your doctor and a nutritionist before doing any kind of major dietary changes, particularly something like the keto diet. One more thing I wanted to bring up, though, is uh, for people who have a certain condition called polycystic ovary disease, the keto diet can be extremely helpful. A lot of people with this, they're on the borderline, they're pre-diabetic, and Part of what drives polycystic ovary disease is insulin release. And being on the keto diet brings your insulin release way down. And it can be extremely helpful for people with that disorder. But again, check with your doctor. Some supervision. 100%. And yeah, and you have to. A lot of the, yeah, a lot of the women that, that I'm friends with on Instagram, um, a lot of them suffer from PCOS. And, mm -hmm. and this is, yeah, Help. exactly. It, it's helped them tremendously. Yeah, because I was going to say too, you know, this might be sexist, but I think. Um, for a lot of guys, this kind of diet, you know, may be really easier than it would be for women because a lot of guys, you know, they're really into eating protein and meat and, you know, things like that, where a lot of women are kind of more go towards carbs when they want to splurge. If you do your research on this, there are like there's specifics for keto for men and keto for women. I have a question for you because I know you're a cyclist. You, you, yeah. cy you cycle with my... Um with my brother-in-law. So I want to read something to you from uh, Dr. Edward Weiss. He's Associate Professor of Nutrition and Dietetics at St. Louis University. He doesn't believe that the ketogenic diet is good for sports performance getting better. He says, I hear cyclists say all the time that they're faster and better now that they're on keto. Okay. But then his first question is, well, how much weight do you lose? So if you've taken off you you didn't start right away, but if you're 50 pounds lighter, of course your performance is going to get better. What what are your thoughts on that? Did uh, you notice? A hundred percent. When I first started, I mean, cycle. I, I was never a cyclist before. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like basing it on on faster and all that, I mean, starting 50 pounds heavier from where I am now, it was already. I mean, every every week I was getting stronger and stronger, just healthier as well, just because mm -hmm. of the cardio. Um, right. 
But in terms of, I, I would say I agree. Um, you do as a cyclist, if you want to be, if you want to just do low, uh, like uh, steady state right. cardio, you can do it on car. I've done 80 mile rides completely fasted just with sh- uh, pickle, pickle juice and mm-hmm. water. Uh, <laughs> not recommending it. Right, right. But um, I've just, tr- just to see if it worked. Um, right. But you have carb but, loaded too before big rides. Um, no. So now that's what I do now in terms okay. of like, yeah, trying to um, uh, get stronger at, exactly get stronger as a rider mm-hmm. i am introducing carbohydrates before before my uh my rides or as right. well as all my rides um yeah. but i've also measured myself uh in terms of ketones level a couple hours afterwards and my body i'm, I'm still in a, ke- uh, a state of ketosis as mm-hmm. well as my body I, is utilizing those carbohydrates um faster and and right. and um first right okay and you measure yourself through again tmi ph strips um urine. sorry no i don't use the urine strips oh okay uh, see we're yeah, gonna learn the, something <laughs> the urine strips are, are there uh um, for your first month on keto um mm-hmm. your body is doesn't know what to do with the ketone so that's why it's excreting uh you're you're excreting, excreting mm-hmm. sorry um basically so that's why it'll show up in your in your urine levels so obviously the higher higher levels of of ketones that show up on the strip the more ketones your body's producing and then after a couple of weeks once you get fat adapted your body starts utilizing those ketones and it won't show up on the urine strips anymore. So the only way to do it is with a blood monitor. So I, I measure my blood uh, uh, glucose levels as well as my ketone levels. Like the way a diabetic would. Correct. Okay. And do you do that every day? No. When, when I was like really trying to learn what foods do, do uh, what uh, okay. to me, I was. Um, now I, I rarely check, maybe once a month. All right. Okay. So I want to just give a list of some keto snacks and you can sure. tell me if you think, you know, because people like, what do they snack? So seeds and nuts. Yes. Cheese. Yes. Uh, fish or meat. Yes. Dark chocolate. We talked about hard boiled eggs. Yes. Olives. Yes. Uh, guacamole and salsa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked about berries um, and some full fat yogurt. Uh, I haven't found so many options that with, with low sugar. Okay. Um, Plain, but yeah, usually. I, I, yeah, I mean, so it's not your thing. Yogurt's yeah, it's not your thing. Definitely not my thing. Um, okay, and are you taking? Are you taking any supplements? No supplements. I just, oh, yeah, I make sure to get the nutrients I need from the foods, like right. avocados and berries, right. and. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. Right. <laughs> yes. In terms of <laughs> snacks, I mean, there are also now. I mean, compared to when when Atkins diet was was popular, um, there wasn't so many right. snack options. Now you have. Like Quest, all kosher. I mean, different right. different um, cookies, chips, definitely processed stuff, but right. low carb. So to help you, like if somebody really wants a cookie exactly. or if really you're wants traveling, chips yeah. or something, they can actually satisfy People that, that are craving. nashi or right. like you said, transitioning into the keto, I, I, you know, I need that cookie in the morning. Right. No problem. So have the low carb one. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't, you, I don't, I don't do it now. Um, but right. again, I do have urges and I'll have, you know, an right. urge for a cookie and I'll right. go and have it. So that, that's good because I think Andrew and I entered in here thinking, oh my God, the keto diet, it's so hard to adhere <sighs> to. It's not a very um, healthy, long-term weight loss solution. But I, I'm glad you came in because what you presented to us was a very balanced keto right. diet. Right. You know, exactly. you're, you've kind of, you've gone through the hard stuff and now you know your body well enough. You know when to indulge, when to add things, when to, you know, so that it's not like this really tunnel vision kind of like, okay, I'm never eating a cookie again. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I eat cookies, but <laughs> yeah. it's just then utilizing those carbs afterwards. So, right. right yeah. So. And one other thing I remember, you know, when the Atkins diet came in, people were saying, oh yeah, you can eat all this stuff. Like you can eat all the deli meat and um, you know, <laughs> yeah. bacon and all this stuff that you want to. And, and actually you can't, um, you really still have to eat healthy sources of protein, healthy fats. That, yeah. That's more just like a quick and easy, yeah. Grab and go sort of thing. But right. I'm, I'm very into, you know, in terms of chicken, the dark chicken, uh, salmon, uh-huh. just the fatty cuts of salmon. Um, right. Yeah. Not so much of like the, like the, the pastrami and stuff like that. I'll have it, but right. not all the time. So right. it's just great. finding that moderation. And you know, what's really great when you get your rotisserie chicken, you can eat the skit. <laughs> exactly yeah exactly all the right. wings all that you can have the skin with it that's great well moshe thank you so much for My coming pleasure. and you, you can me. follow moshe at keto kosher and follow me on instagram at jill sharfman i also want to thank our engineer here at the network studios mike Casantini, and his associate ryan um so thank you uh that was great very okay. informative and thank not you. not necessarily where i thought it would go so yeah <laughs> all right great thank you okay thank you and that is it for this episode of let my people eat 
please visit our website at LetMyPeopleEat.com and leave us a comment. Get in touch at our email at podcast at LetMyPeopleEat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. Post on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook with the hashtag LetMyPeopleEatPodcast. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Tell your friends and family and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. And please remember that although we are certified professionals, this is not a medical advice podcast. No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own health practitioner about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharfman. And I'm Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us. And go in good health.